Okay, I didn't line all that up very well, so. Anyway, now on to the serious stuff. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about uh, the new Poke Edit, the new website, and the new editor. Um, we have, let me see, I have some notes here. Yeah, so basically this is just a, a sneak peek of what's in store probably in about two weeks from now. So the new editor, when the site first launch or when the site relaunches, it's going to be similar to the current site, at least the editor, because it's still going to have only 4th and 5th gen. But we're going to be rolling out some stuff for 6th gen after that, and also some other cool new features uh, for 5th gen, like... Um, you may have seen already. Here, let me get to the feed here. Um, no, you don't want to see that. Just a second. Okay. Let me make sure this is working. All right. So we added uh, save support not too long ago um, for the old editor, the new editor, current, or current editor, I mean. And those saves are compatible with like Pokegen and Pokesave and stuff. Uh, the new site will have that too, but another feature we're going to be adding on the new one is uh, file upload. So, like this page here, this is your uh, file select page where you can make new files and stuff, and currently you can only make files on the site but the new site is going to have a upload feature um, let's see here hope that changed okay yeah okay and this is what the uh, new file select page looks like so you can create files you can up you'll be able to upload files if you click this um, you can download them delete them, copy them, do whatever you need to do. So, let's see, let me get to my notes here. Alright, anyway, I'm going to try to keep this uh, this stream kind of short um, and try to get to some questions at the end. So, I basically just wanted to show off the new site, just the way it looks, the way it's going to work, and a couple new features that the editor has, and then I'll you know, get to the stuff you've probably all been waiting for at the end, which is talk, you know, mention the the six gen stuff. So, anyway, it's pretty similar to the old thing. Uh, you have a trainer items Pokemon tab, so I'm sure most of you are interested in the Pokemon tab. So, let's dive in. All right, I'll just point out one difference with this page is uh, it's a little easier to navigate around uh, for the between the different boxes on your file and there's also a search which there used to not be for some reason so now you click search you just type like you know you want to edit a PG probably you just click it and then you can edit a PG and that takes you into the file select page which is similar to um, this page hope you can see it oh sorry this is the old one so it looks looks a little different so I hope you like it all right so uh, it's bit, we broke it up the page up a little bit differently and it looks if you guys are familiar with the Pokemon maker that we released when the GTS was still alive it's similar to that and it has a lot of the same features that that had so like for example here let me make sure you can see it Hope you can see that. Let me see what the chat looks like here. All right, so, yeah, so the new editor, in addition to being able to just edit everything like you used to be able to do, uh, it, we pulled over some features from the Pokemon Maker. So there's builds, which are uh, little Pidgey. Pidgey doesn't have any builds, so let's go to a different Pokemon. How about Charizard? Alright, so Charizard has some builds. So, yeah, so just like the Pokemon Maker, we have some builds. Uh, if you're familiar with that, you'll know how to use this. It just has some preset moves from Smallgon, or builds from Smallgon. 
and you apply it and it instantly applies it and any other edits you have it'll just apply it so you hit apply the first time you make an edit in the new editor um, it'll take a little bit a few seconds maybe 10 seconds and then after that it should the edit should only take a second to load up so the other new things we got here which the old editor didn't have is the legal analysis so you'll be able to run that like you did in the Pokemon Maker um, we have a uh, insert events so you can replace the slots with event Pokemon which we had but this one is gonna have a lot bigger event Pokemon database than the last one so you'll be able to get pretty much any legit event Pokemon that you want from fourth or fifth gen uh, what else is new uh, it's easier to kind of change through your slots if you want to clear a slot out just hit delete there's a couple features that some more advanced users you might want to use like um, if you want to upload a PKM directly to the slot or transfer and move Pokemon around um, used to do that on this page but uh, I came up with a better way to do that I think so that's there's gonna be an option in tools which is up here and you go in there and there's like a move transfer tool and there's a mass editor and a lot of advanced stuff it's, it's pretty awesome so anyway yeah, let's get into the I'll just show you around this page a little bit so you can spin this little cube thing and get to all the edits you need to make um, it's a lot easier than the old editor for like selecting held items and stuff uh, you can see the descriptions of them you can search um, it has if you're interested you can see which ones are the most popular that's the default order they're in um, abilities shows you the legal versus not legal and you can search through um, for language if you want to make like a Japanese or a French Pokemon you can change the language here and uh, we have it set up so if you change the language the nickname automatically changes to the correct nickname default for that language so if you change it to Japanese when you download it or put it in the game it's gonna be like a legal Japanese Pokemon so anyway uh, onto the moves moves it's a lot easier to find the moves you want now there's like all sorts of filters and it shows the type and all the details and what kind it is and you can search and everything so it's it's way cool um, stats similar to the Pokemon maker just kind of cleaned it up a little bit and you there's some EV presets you can get in here and tweak your uh, IVs people that are using builds probably won't need to do too much tweaking though but and then the extra tab so you probably won't want to be messing with this much unless um, unless you really know what you're doing so and this has ribbons contest stats and OT data it's built into this it's like an extra option because this isn't like commonly changed stuff the reason it's uh, OT information's in here is because in the editor there's a trainer tab and whatever you set is your trainer data there it's gonna apply to all your Pokemon anyway so you most likely won't be changing that very often. So anyway, let's see where I am. Uh, so this is all probably stuff you... This isn't much new stuff. It's just we kind of combine Pokemon Maker features with the editor feature just to make a really nice save and PKM editor. Um, Alright, real quick, I don't know, for those of you who actually use the site, so probably for team members and stuff, uh, I'm not going to get into it right now, but the new site's going to have like a lot more features for community and stuff, like there's going to be built-in chat, um, there's going to be, so you'll be able to like pop up in chats like you can on like Facebook and Google Plus and chat with people on your friend list and stuff. And there's going to be like an award point system leveling, you can kind of like level up and stuff. So um, 
when you're logged in, if you click your user avatar, this one's mine. So you can just see, and you know, pull down the uh, like little user menu, and you, it'll show if you have any unread messages, um, and have links to various places that you would need to go, depending on your step. Like if you're a moderator, you'll have a link to the mod control panel and stuff. You can log out and do whatever. And the new site's got this fancy little cheeseburger menu. So if you want to get to different places easier, you can uh, use this menu. Alright, now um, I just want to show one more thing about the, the new design as far as the site goes. Um, it, the new site is compatible with everything. So you can use it on iOS, Android, your tablet. It all scales down and works really well. So let me, here we go. This is a, a little thing I built so I can show you what it looks like. So when you're on like an iPhone, um, it looks pretty similar, it's just kind of more condensed, but I think it it ends up kind of being similar to an app, what you've come to be used to in an app. You can still access the builds, you know, legal analysis with this little menu. It has all the sidebar options in it. And then... Yeah, you can get to everything. It's just the same thing, just kind of small. And I'll show you what it looks like in a. If you here's if you got like a bigger, like an Android phone, same thing, just a little bigger. And it, oh yeah, and at the bottom it always shows what file you have selected. And if you want to, if you click, well, this isn't working. But usually, if you click this burger, the mini burger brings up the mini menu. Yeah, and then you can. Go back to the file select, download the save. If you want to purchase something from our site, you can load the save directly onto something. All right, so I think that's gonna do it on showing off the other. Well, I'll show you the iPad one real quick. It's just slightly different. Um, it's like a mix of the mobile version and the site version, so you can still get your cheeseburger menu and access all the edits it's just it's everything you would need you know so alrighty now uh, I want to talk real quick about the something new that we're gonna be having pretty soon we're going to be I don't know how soon after the site launches, I'd say probably within a, a couple weeks, so three or four weeks from now, uh, there's going to be a poke edit offline version, like a downloadable kind of advanced save editor. So the idea is to make it have save editor online and offline. Uh, there's benefits to using one over the other, but we kind of wanted to offer both for people who, you know, you can do a little bit more advanced stuff with the offline one. And then if you want, you can always upload your save directly from that to the uh, website. So. And now, I guess we'll get to the part, the 6 gen part, because that's probably what you guys are waiting on. I don't have, I'm not going to have anything to actually show you as far as on the website goes, but I'll, I'll just talk, to, talk about it for a minute. Let me close this out. All right, so for 6th gen, um, probably, it's I hate guessing and then being wrong, but I'd say like a week or two after we launch the new site, because there's gonna, it's, we're trying to launch it as soon as possible, so there's gonna be a few features missing. But as we kind of roll out all the features that were left out, uh, well then we'll start putting in the 6th gen stuff, which is, at the beginning, it's gonna be a, Basically, a file editor, you won't be able to download the saves, but you will be able to download the PKX files, or that's what they're calling them for 6th gen. Hold on, coffee. Yeah, so I think we'll have PKX downloads, and it'll have, it'll be cool though, because you'll be able to build it in the same editor, so you'll have access to the 
you know, like the move decks and the builds and all that, you can build some really cool 6th gen Pokemon. And I believe by that time we'll be, we will have the ability to load kind of some kind of a file with Pokemon constructed in our editor onto a game. Uh, it won't be anything that you, you, you're probably imagining that could be public that people could use because the encryption is really hard and we'll, we'll have, there'll be a process that we'll do. So for people that want to like do a full loaded customized game and edit all the Pokemon in the editor, You'll probably be able to do that on our site and maybe do a send-in service or something, but that's still a lot of work for like Ron and stuff who's going to be doing it manually. They'll, you know, go through the encryption and use some different tools and like put it together for you. So that's what you're paying for is us to like put it, put the whole thing together for you. But as far as offering a save download support, it's possible that we'll be having that in the future, but we still have a little bit more work to do on that. So. Anyway, I think that's everything that I wanted to talk about, so, um, let's see. Yeah, I'm going to take questions. If something I said wasn't clear, I'm not very articulate, probably. It's the first time I've ever streamed. I'm kind of nervous anyway, so... Yeah, so I'm going to try to start doing a stream at least once a week, just so I get used to it, and then I, I don't know, it gives me a little bit of motivation if I have people who, you know, care and check out the streams, and I have, you know, something to, sh someone to show my progress to and stuff when I'm, as I'm working on it. it. Makes it a little fun and gives me some motivation, probably. I hope. I mean, that's the plan, so I'll try it out. So if people like the streams and want to watch them... I'll keep doing them. Maybe. Oh, and while I'm waiting for the questions to come in, um, I I'm gonna probably be streaming either you know the new Ruby or new Sapphire on Twitch. I I haven't ordered it yet. I'm I'm probably gonna order a 3DS with a capture card today. And I've never played third gen, so playing it on a 3DS on the new versions would be pretty cool. So I might try to stream that too, maybe like for a couple hours every morning or something my time, which will be your evening. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to get to the questions now. So I got my first one has come in. The question is, why did Pokebank say the Pokemon weren't legit when I created Japanese Pokemon in the editor? You got that? So, he's whoever asked the question made Japanese Pokemon in the editor, and when they tried to import them into Pokemon Bank, they didn't work. Now, that's kind of a vague question a little bit, but it depends on a couple factors. If you use the old editor, which is... Uh, let me move to it real quick. Uh, that's not going to help you, is it? Um, okay, well, I'm not going to use that. If you use the current online save editor on our website, uh, I that has some issues, actually, with the language. We didn't have a lot of people editing the language, and our newest updates that fix some of the language problems we had were implemented in the Pokemon Maker, so if you're making them there, Maybe it'll work. I don't know. Um, I'd have to actually see which Pokemon you're trying, know which editor you're using. So maybe if you want to hit up the boards or something, or send me an email, and I can take a look at it. But the new, for, as far as the new editor goes, once that goes live, uh, if you download Japanese Pokemon from that, they're going to work. There's not going to be any problems on the new editor. Like any language, it doesn't matter. All right, so next question is... For your Pokemon Emerald Unlock games, you s sell, are the IVs and EVs maxed out on the Pokemon? 
if you're getting them all at level 100. Uh, the files that we have on our third gen games in the store, you know, we don't have a an advanced editor for that, so we painstakingly, I'm not going to get into the details, but it was, it was a long, painful process of putting together files for those, and they're a little outdated. Uh, we know a little bit more now than we did when we first created them, so we might we might be trying to put together either some new files that are a little more up to date. I'm not answering the question, but I'm get, I'll get to it. Um, I don't know. I, I had thought about maybe making a third gen editor, but I just don't see if I don't see there being a really big demand for it. Um, but as far as the IVs go, um, if you get a level hundred file, uh, all the EVs and the IVs are maxed, the, but not the EVs aren't over the legal, what's legal, so they're just maxed out, kind of average, so that's the way the it is on the default files on our DS games too, I know that's not ideal for most Pokemon, but um, that's just the way those are right now, so um, sometimes if you, I don't know if you're interested in ordering a third gen game. If you have a couple custom requests, we can put together a couple, couple sweet Pokemon, you know. With, but unless we implement some kind of a third gen editor or something, uh, for right now they're just going to be kind of averaged out, maxed, but kind of averaged stats uh, for level hundred. And then as you go down to like level five and stuff, they're kind of more like naturally, natural and kind of randomized. So. I hope that answers your question. Uh, the next question is, can you give us a release date for the new editor? Um, the plan is right now for this editor, I, I'm shooting for two weeks from now. Um, it's a little, it's a little tough because, you know, the editor isn't the only part of our website. You know, we have a, a boards and a store and an editor and stuff, so I'm trying to basically finish enough of the site that we can relaunch with and not lose everything. Like, So there might not be a dedicated news section stuff on the new site, but there'll be a store, the new editor, and the forums will be all up and running when it launches. So I'm saying two weeks on that, maybe three, but I'm going to really, really shoot for two. Um, once and then after that, if you're talking about six gen stuff, uh, I'd say probably another two or maybe two or three weeks after that to start like adding the six gen stuff. So, so a month, I guess. And also, um, yeah, since Ruby and Sapphire are coming out next month, I mean, then then we'll be able to start playing around and seeing if uh, our PK PKX files kind of. Are compatible with those games and start being able to play around with that and see what we can do all right I guess I don't know I don't see any other questions so let me ask if there's any more well I don't know how many people are tuned in it's probably not that many but thanks anyway gonna try to do this more often and get some practice maybe get good at it maybe get good at showing things that people care about I hope that's the plan and uh, quit saying uh uh thanks to all the team members that showed up and helped out thanks to Elitza for moderating she's awesome um, if you guys don't have an account on Poketit you should get one because we have a sweet community there and maybe you could become a team member team members have some benefits so if you stick around hang out get to be part of the community maybe you could become a team member and you get some some bennies. It's pretty cool.
And, uh, all right. So, check us out. Where are we at? If you haven't followed us and liked us and all those things, you should. It just helps us out. It helps us get the message out more. And, uh, you know. We need the help, you know. We're pretty. We're still pretty of a small community inside. So, the more people that know about us, you know, the more traffic we get. It it actually is going to make things better because if we have a bigger community, I'll be able to potentially get more help. I'll have more motivation, and we'll be able to make bigger and better things. Okay. Now I'm going to answer another question real quick. I think I got another. All right, so here's a question: Is will the new editor allow editing of older Gen, FireRed, etc., into fifth gen PKM files? Um, no, that wasn't. I haven't. Not when it launches, at least. That won't be. That won't be a thing. Like I said, I. If we haven't really dabbled into too much third gen stuff, because I'm not sure how big the market is for it. You know, if, if we had, maybe we could make some polls or something, but if there was a lot of requests for third gen, uh, I have access to some, some code that a, uh, maybe you guys know Ciro's Pokemon Maker, um, he went away and was never to be seen again, but the code he worked on is floating around the internet, so, I mean, maybe if we looked at that, and it wasn't too much work, we could probably put together a third gen editor, you know, reasonable amount of time, something, you know. I mean, if if what you're asking is you just want to like import third gen Pokemon, have them kind of import into fifth gen and f saves, that'd probably be even easier to do. Um, we just gotta figure out, you know, we gotta write a, f I, I'm not gonna get into the technical stuff, but we could, I think we could do it yeah, so it just has to be enough demand, I guess. And then uh, let's go on to the next question. How many people are working on this project? How many people are working on this project? So uh, as far as coding and programming and stuff and all the, te the technical back end stuff, it's just me and uh, Wallace who works with me on most of the projects. Uh, another guy who is a part of the whole thing is Ron. He doesn't do any of the programming. He handles all the, I mean, he handles all the sales that we do. And he handles, um, anytime like people message through any of the outlets that we sell on, he does like customer support there and stuff. Anyway, he's not on the website a lot, but he does do a lot of customer service and, uh, sales stuff. So yeah, just two people. So it's not a lot. So it, it's a lot of work. So if that's all the questions, I'm going to wrap this up. I think. So remember uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way next time we do live events, you can know about it. And they're going to get cooler and better and sweeter and more awesomer. I promise. Uh, yeah, just follow us on social stuff. So, you know, because I, up, I update them with different stuff quite often about what we're doing and what we're working on and stuff. Excuse me. So now I'm just kind of waiting. I don't think there's any more questions. Well, thanks to everyone who showed up. And I'm looking forward to re unveiling this whole thing in a couple weeks. So I'm pretty excited about it. It's going to be pretty cool. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else. Um, I didn't talk about apps. There is app stuff. Maybe I'll talk about that next time.
There's a question about shiny encounter frames being low or not. Um, you know, isn't that a shiny encounter frames is a some aspect of the save file, isn't it? Um, or is it in the PKM file? I, I, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that, but uh, as I dig into the files and start looking into it, working on it, we have like a database. Uh, well, we don't we don't make it. There's this really cool site called Vcoon. They keep a really cool database updated. Um, but yeah, I'll dig through there when I start putting it together. I mean, we have kind of a raw a template for it. I I, I just I haven't actually had a lot of time to play those games yet anyway, and I don't know where the shiny encounter stuff is stored or anything yet, but I, I'm sure I'll be able to figure it out. So I'll have answers to that. I'll probably have answers to that on a stream. I'm going to do another stream dedicated to 6th gen talk. So uh, hopefully I'll have your answer when I do that. Alright, I think that's going to wrap it up. So, thanks for tuning in. And I'm not going to turn this off just yet, I'm, but it's getting very close. Just want to make sure there's no more questions. Now I'm just chilling. Oh, while I'm waiting, I'll show you something. Okay. Yeah, I, sh I had that semi. Okay. Well, I'll just show you real quick anyway. This is on my iPhone. I got an Android phone over here too, but I'll show you on the iPhone. Um, yeah, it's just. I had like a little simulator I built with the iPhone, but it's it actually. You know, works on here. I have a. Don't look at the URL. Anyway, you can see it. And it. Oh, you know what I didn't show you? I'll show it next time. Uh, there's a drop down menu when you're logged in. I think it's cool, but when it has like your PMs and all the good stuff and links to all your account stuff. Uh, we it works too on mobile, but it uh. It's just kind of structured a little differently. You can still get to everything really easily, though. I think it's pretty cool. Kind of looks like an app. So, anyway, I hope you guys like liked everything. Um, I'm gonna try to do this again, and hopefully we can build up more subscribers to our YouTube account and get this thing built up and have a big, strong community, and we'll all give each other big hugs. All right, cool. I'm gonna. Peace out for now. So thanks for watching.